94 Rocks, Jay-Z backstage at Midsummer Music Fest. It is the third and final day, and I get a finally, finally a chance to see in person, touch in person, hug already in person, Mixie from Stitched Up Heart. Mixie, it is great once again to talk to you and the first time to see you. How you doing? I'm doing so good, and I'm so glad that I finally get to meet you in real life like you're a human like person. That's so cool. Absolutely. I know. We've had a chance to talk a couple times. We did about eight years ago. We talked about a year ago. We talked about just when your brand new album, To the Wolves, was just about ready to come out. Let's talk about that a little bit. It came out. How's it been going so far the first year? Oh, man. It's kind of weird. It's uh, about to hit one whole year. September 1st was when the whole album uh, dropped, and it's been a wild ride. Um, We've been touring a lot with Escape the Fate because Craig Mappet sang on the title track to the Wolves. Um, and he's been coming up on stage. We shared her to bus. We did a tour in Europe with them. Uh, so it's been a lot of fun. And I'm just so grateful that this record brought the things and experiences that it brought. So I wouldn't have been able to experience it without making that music. Of course, you released a lot of songs early on. I'm kind of curious if you're still looking at maybe releasing a song or two yet to rock radio here before that maybe album kind of drifts away and you're ready for something new is there something in the works yet on that or not yeah uh, we are about 20 songs into the next record and we're about to finish up um, this uh, album which we are going to be producing DIY Monster Energy is helping um, and we're going to you know do the whole uh, just try it for a record see if we can actually own our masters and push it and um, see what happens so we're 20 something songs in and as soon as this festival is done then we go into the studio at Nashville finish it up and i'm really pumped for this one so yeah. we talked about it before because you've been in the industry now a little bit obviously you really kind of got your break with finally free the first song that really i think puts you on the map on rock radio and i, I use rock radio but I've, i'm sure you've been on the map before then just because of your local base and all the people that you were with but i guess how have you noticed the industry changing for yourself and your band and have you kind of changed and adapted to it like you're saying here now that you want to kind of put your own stuff out and not have maybe necessarily uh, record labels or that backing it so you can maybe potentially make some more dollars. Absolutely. We learned so much. You know, we've had three awesome records with the with the label with Century Media. Um, and so we've grown and learned and all of the uh, Finally Free and Monster getting so much airplay. We learned so much about radio and um, made so many amazing friends and connections like yourself um and I, i'm more than grateful that we were able to do what we've been able to do with that with those record and learn all of the stuff that we've been able to learn to be able to get to a point where we can self-sustain this next record um and see how that goes i mean you know as musicians you don't really get a lot of money from the music so uh we're curious to know what what we're really worth what is our art really worth and um and how much work goes into it on that end as well. So um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm a little nervous, to be honest, because it's scary. It's like jumping out of the nest and flying on your own. But um, it's, a, it's a new chapter. So I've talked to a lot of artists in the last year, and a lot of them are kind of in that similar boat as you. They've kind of started to break away from the old tradition of the record label, and it's given them a little more freedom to be more creative. So I guess the question I want to ask you is, with now that more freedom of creativity, will we see maybe a little bit different feel of Stitched Apart than what we're used to hearing? Uh, you know, it's still the same band. So depending on what producer we go with, it, it varies on how the sound ends up being in the end, the total package. Uh, but it, the next record is, uh, I was more in the, the, I guess, live performance mindset and thinking how fun the live show would be and thinking more of like getting people moving and like having fun with it. Um, uh, and we want to, just from listening to the people that listen to us, what they request is a lot more screaming, a lot more heavy breakdowns and um obviously the melodic choruses and stuff like that so we're trying to find a balance that's not alienating our original uh, vision but evolving um to make this record its own kind of thing um and so it's not too far from what we've done because we are just who we are and we're going to write that way but it's going to be a little different but not something you'd be like i can't believe this is stitched apart but there's a few songs that are going to be like did she grow a pair of balls (laughs) <laughs> well, I know, I think, uh, if I remember right off the uh, um, the latest album, uh, To the Wolves, wasn't Immortal pretty heavy? Yeah. 
So are we looking more kind of on that kind of realm a little bit? Or what are we looking at? I would love to do a whole album of just Screamies. Um, but, you know, we do have to not go too far. Granted, our guitar player who's over there going, we're going metal. We're going heavier. Like, he's just like, oh, yeah, he's pushing it, you know. So um, it, it really just kind of whatever the song calls for um, and whatever producer we're working with, it changes uh, based on their vision as well. So it's a... Uh, I don't know. It, it, we want to go more immortal. We want to do that. Um, but there are going to be songs that are more just bouncy fun, kind of, um, with like heavy down tune riffs and screams and stuff. Well, I think as a musician, obviously, if you care about rock radio or not, rock radio has really embraced the heaviness now. They've opened up their, I guess, blinders for all these years. I'm just going to say it because yeah. I'm in the industry never really been a corporate guy we've always been a obviously independent station but i've noticed that even that level the corporate level now those stations are allowing the screams they're allowing the heavy music and we're seeing those songs get to the charts that makes me so happy i mean that's like a gajira moment in paris like that is so cool to know that metal is getting kind of appreciated more than um, has been in the past. And so that's awesome. And I hope that we get so heavy that people just don't even know how to contain themselves, you know? It's a great way to just release that that energy, you know? And and everybody's kind of tired of hearing kind of like the the same thing. I think when when artists like kind of push the limits, those are the ones that always make it. Like they, they just shoot off to the top because it's like different than what everybody's doing and i respect that and i personally just like heavy stuff because i feel tough well and you see uh, obviously you see people out in the in the crowd when you're playing a show and they might be suit and tie people during the daytime but at night they just let loose and i'm sure you see a lot of that don't you yeah and i'm one of them i mean like i need to get that out too and i think it makes me like there's so much pent up energy that we all kind of have inside based off just the world in general. Um, and I think that it's a way, a form of therapy to just like go in the pit and just punch everything (laughs) and like, you know, fall down a few times, get bloody and like have fun and, uh, you know, have a bang over the next day from headbanging so hard. I think it's just fun. And I think people want to have a good time. And so, um, I'm glad, I'm so glad to hear that, uh, the radio stations are picking up more heavy stuff. Let's talk about uh, what's kind of on the horizon for you guys. Uh, obviously, you talk about there is going to be a new album. Do we know roughly when we might see a new album coming out? Is it 2025? When do we see some new stuff? What What can you give us some information on? So at this point, we do want to release at least one single before the end of the year. Um, we've got a couple that are almost mixed fully um we're just waiting until we have a marketing plan for it um and right now we're solidifying the dates with the producer to get in for the last bit of the recording process so um once we have that done which should probably be in september october um then we plan the marketing strategy around that and it sounds like it's going to be more of like releasing every like six to eight weeks or something a single single keeping the you know content coming and, and music coming out and keeping things relevant because these days it's just with streaming people need new music all the time and uh if we have a whole album we can kind of figure it out but there is no actual plan at the moment but i think that the single route is kind of the way to do it even though we're recording a whole album it is one in the entirety um, but we haven't figured out exactly how the plan's going to go yeah i mean it's worked for a lot I've, I've i sat down last year and talked to ronnie about it, ronnie radke about it and he, he obviously we chatted about it and he said you know singles are kind of the way to go he actually just released now a new album with all those compilations mm-hmm. of the signals he had but he said that the attention span sometimes of the listener is not a, it's it wasn't a negative towards the listener but sometimes they're always looking for fresh new stuff and so that's kind of the way he is and i've seen a lot of artists going that direction a little bit more and it sounds like you might be going that direction a little bit too yeah i mean um even in the darkness record we did the waterfall effect where it was like every six to eight weeks you release a song and it was like i think five four or five singles and we did the same with this record could push it a few more singles but um if you record the whole thing as a whole you still have that element of the album as a concept um and a vision for that that one thing so people still get the record but they're just getting more more stuff as it goes if you release a whole record on your own like at one time people listen to it for like a week or two and then they're just on to the next you know so i think as uh in in the business standpoint 
we have to keep releasing stuff and staying relevant and um you know keep making music and people want more music all the time so try to give them what they want one thing obviously when you put new music out normally you do some touring so i'm guessing you've got some ideas on what you want to do yet for touring uh, on this new music yes i can't talk about anything um I my, that. yeah my my first priority is to just get in the studio um and uh, finish the record we've been out uh for we six seven wait three months i don't even know uh we just got back like 11 days ago from europe uh and then right before that we did steel panther and so it's been a lot of touring so it's good to come out play the show um which is cool by the way drowning pool and yeah. skillet and i absolutely adore those bands so i'm really excited um and a lincoln park cover band which is super cool um and uh yeah we're having fun and i can't tell you any more than that i know you could i just i always try always i always that. try <laughs> i always try it's kind of like a fisherman you never that will release where your favorite spot is it's kind of the same thing with an artist you already got so much out of me i mean <laughs> i did i did so let me ask you this what's one thing obviously you're young in your career yet but you've been around a little bit what's one thing that you still really would like to do that you're that's churning in your mind that you haven't done yet that's going you know, this is something I'd love to do yet as as an artist, as a band. Is there something out there yet that is, like, pushing you to say, hey, I'd love to go do this at some point? Oh, yeah, there's so much. Um, I want to tour Japan. I want to tour, like, Australia. We still haven't gone out there. We finally got Europe. That was the first European tour we've ever done. So that was, like, a huge bucket list, and we were just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, like, the whole time. That was our first bus tour also, bus share. Um, with Escape the Fate. So it was like we were living a totally different band life, like a different level. Um, uh, that for sure. I want to add more production um, to the live show. Uh, we've minimalized the amount of gear we have to make more room. So we're, if we're usually opening band, we aren't in the way. We don't have that much stuff, but we want to add more lights and production and like a more of a, mm, I don't know, theatrical thing, but not, you know, it takes a lot of money to do that kind of yeah. stuff. So. Uh, hey, Monster Energy, you want to send us another? <laughs> Just kidding. That's good. That's not a bad thing whatsoever. <laughs> I'm sure they've, they've helped out a lot of artists over the years. Yeah, I mean, they, they're the reason we were able to do Europe. They're the reason that we're able to put out this record on our own, this next one. We've been with them for over eight years now. Um, I think we're the longest uh, rock act that they've had on their roster. So they've been super supportive and um, yeah we just hope they stay forever <laughs> awesome all right i did give you a homework assignment you didn't remember the homework assignment but that's okay I'm never good at homework. because uh well that's okay i really wasn't either i was always a last minute crammer anyway i did get through i actually graduated from college which i don't know how but i did anyway so but that homework assignment is last time we talked i had asked you if there's a song that you would could sing or something so i could sing anything it's like what then you said well i can sing twinkle twinkle little stars in a metal yeah. kind of sound so you did just a quick little practice here can you give us just a short little lick of what it would sound like uh on rock radio twinkle twinkle little star how i wonder what you are <laughs> love it love it that is awesome I, I, i'll give you an a for that a, a, definitely, indeed. Hey, Mixie, I know we got to get going. You've got a busy uh, show coming up here in just a moment. But I guess, is there anything you'd like to tell your fans out there for Stitched Up Heart? Uh, just keep paying attention. And if you want to support our new record, just, uh, you know, stay tuned. And we have a whole bunch of really cool, fun songs coming out for you. So, um, yeah, we love your support and we appreciate you. Awesome. And hopefully uh, we'll be one of the first stations to spin your brand new music. Oh, that would be so awesome. Thank you so much. Make sure you send it our way. Mixie, once again, great to finally meet you in person. Have fun tonight. I will. I know. <laughs> once again, that is Mixie from the band Stitched Apart. Jay-Z backstage at Midsummer Music Fest in Managa here on 94 Rocks.